The subject of this Irish folklore video was chosen by my patrons on Patreon. You can help vote to decide what kind of content I make by signing up for as little as one dollar a month. Saint Brendan was already a famous and much loved saint who had performed many miracles and founded many monasteries when his friend Barfind came to stay at his monastery in Clonfort in County Kerry. Now over their evening meal, Brendan could sense an air of melancholy around his friend Barfind. And when questioned, Barfind confessed that several days earlier, he had received a vision from the angels. A vision of the land of promise. And it was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. He said that the beaches were strewn not with sand, but with precious gems and minerals. And that flowers and fruits did hang from the trees at the self same time and that they were bright of colour and sweet of smell, and that the sun never set upon the land of promise, but it was always daylight, and there there was no fear, or pain, or suffering, or death. And Brendan, he was moved to tears by the beauty of Barfin's description, and so Brendan and several of his monks, they resolved that they themselves would set sail for the land of promise. They built themselves a ship with a frame of oaken timbers and a skin of cow hides sewn together and waterproofed with beeswax. And they fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights to make themselves worthy of retaining the promised land and purifying themselves. Well, they provisioned their ship and they set sail. They had been sailing for 40 days when they came upon a strange isle. An island strange in its inhabitants, for they were all sheep. But these sheep were taller than any man, taller than any tree. And so they found it very easy to restock their provisions. And so they set sail once more. And after many days at sea, they wanted to find a place where they could hold a Lenten mass. And they came upon another island. Another strange island. But island is too small a word. It was so vast, it seemed like a whole country to itself. But there was no sand upon its beaches, and no trees or bushes grew. It seemed only to be smooth rock as far as the eye could see. So Brendan, he remained upon the ship while his monks went ashore. They set up an altar and they said their mass, and after mass was complete, they set up a cauldron to prepare a meal. And no sooner than they had lit the fire, than the land they stood upon began to shudder. And the monks with great fear ran back to the ship, where Brendan began to laugh. This was no mere island, said Brendan, no mere country. This is the greatest, vastest ship the Lord ever did put into the ocean, the great sea monster known as Jason. Jason. There are a few texts that refer to it as Jasonius, but it's mostly called Jason, and Jasonius is basically just be Jason, the fish's name is Jason. So Brendan and his monks, they sailed away from Jason, looking for somewhere else they may land, and came upon another strange island, as all the islands they found were. For in the centre of this island grew a tall tree with a wide canopy. They could not tell what kind of tree it was. For all the leaves and branches were covered in the huge white birds that perched upon every inch. And the monks, they stared at this tree in amazement. And when one of the birds flew down and began to speak to them, their amazement grew. 
when Brendan asked the bird how it had come upon the skill of speech, the bird replied, We are not birds at all. We are angels of the Lord. And when Lucifer rebelled, we did follow him, but regretted our actions afterwards. And so the Lord did not condemn us to hell in his mercy, but would not allow us to enter heaven again either. And so we are bound to live here upon earth, carrying out the Lord's will as best we can. And he has told us about you, Brendan, and about your voyage to the land of promise, and he is instructed that you must remain here for Easter. And so Brendan and his monks remained on the island of the birds throughout the feast of Easter, before setting out on sail again. Now shortly after, many, several days after, they came upon a sea as smooth as glass, with, win with winds as still as the sea itself. And Brendan ordered that they pull in the oars and take down the sails and rely upon the will of God alone. After many days sitting still in these becalmed oceans, their food began to run out, run out. But Brendan forbade them from fishing in the sea, saying that they must rely upon the will of God to provide for them. And as the monks began to starve and feel the pangs of hunger, one of the birds from the Isle of Birds came, carrying a huge branch laden in red grapes, which it laid into the ship among them. The monks began to eat their fill, and the bird said, Follow me, and I will lead you to the island where these grapes came from. And so Brendan commanded they put out the oars to follow the bird as it laid them, as it led them to the island. And upon this island it was festooned with grapevines and other foods, and they were able to reprovision their ship and to eat their fill of plenty. They set sail once more and began to encounter the many dangers and wonders the Lord had placed into the sea. It wasn't long after they had left the island of the grapes, when a great fish, perhaps not as vast as Jason, but still vast in its own regard, came and attacked their ship. It bit upon the hull, and it filled the ship with water, and the monks, they wished to attack it with the oars, but Brendan forbade them. He told them they must rely upon the will of God, for there is always a bigger fish. And just as Brendan had said, another fish, vaster still, came up from the depths, and it bit their attacker into three, soaking the seas in blood. And the monks rejoiced before they sailed on. Now after several days, the monks heard a sound like steel being rent asunder with a thunderous wind. And over the horizon came a griffin. The thunder coming from the flapping of its wings, the shrieking of steel coming from its beak. And the monks were terrified until... From the other direction came one of the birds from the Isle of Birds, which plucked out the eyes of the griffin and cast it into the sea as the monks cheered for their salvation. After dealing with the griffin and the departure of their deliverer, the bird from the Isle of Birds, they came upon many strange sights in the ocean. A crystal pillar floated upon the sea, stretching up to the sky. And after that, an island inhabited by demons, who would hurl flaming hammers and weapons at their ship. And when they saw this, Brendan told his monks that they had entered the seas of hell. 
And so he began to pray, to chant the chants that he had been taught all his life. And the ship and his monks, they were protected from the flaming weapons hurled by these demons who gnashed their teeth and screamed and growled in outrage. And as if to prove what Brendan had said about them sailing now through a part of hell, they came upon another island, upon which sat a man on his own. Landing on this island, they asked this man who he was, and he said, My name is Judas Iscariot, and I have been condemned to hell for betraying our Lord Jesus Christ. But for the good deeds I had done in my life, the Lord has decided that I may have a reprieve here on this island on all of his feast days and as well on Sundays. But Brendan, please, I ask of you, offer me your protection for this night. I cannot bear to return to those tortures in the morning. Please protect me from the demons of hell for one night that I may have just a little bit more of a reprieve. And Brendan, in his mercy, having seen the mercy God had upon the man who betrayed his son, and he must emulate that, and he agreed to protect Judas for one night. And when the demons of hell came to drag Judas off to his tortures, Brendan would not allow it. He stood firm between them, forbidding the demons to, from coming any closer. And the demons, they could feel God's love of Brendan, and it made them afraid. They gnashed their teeth and swore at Judas when they came for him again, he would know pain and torment he had never experienced before. And after they had spent that night, Judas gave Brendan and his monks his thanks and wished them luck upon their voyage. And they set sail again, leaving the seas of hell and only a few days later, they came upon another island inhabited by only one man. This man set... Fuck. Um... Having spent the promised night upon the island of Judas, Judas thanked Brendan and his monks and wished them luck upon their journey to the promised land. And so they set sail again. Shortly leaving the seas of hell back to the seas of this world. And they came upon another island inhabited by only one man who sat in the mouth of a cave, clad only in his overgrown hair and beard. And an otter ran back and forth across the island, occasionally bringing the man fish. And St. Brendan said, I know this man. This man is St. Paul. He went out to sea to become a hermit. Look at his piety, the purity of his devotion to God. He must be God's most beloved. And they landed upon the island. And Paul, he knew Brendan. And strangely, he knew all of Brendan's voyage and what he had seen. And St. Paul said, Brendan, you must be the most beloved of God. The sacrifices you have made, the piety of your journey, the purity of your wish to look upon the works of the Lord. And so they did argue with each other about who was the Lord's most beloved, whose sacrifices made them the most pure in his eyes. But Paul, he said, Brendan, Surely you are worthy of reaching the land of promise. And if you sail this way, on this night, you will reach it. For that is what the Lord has told you. And so Brendan and his monks, they set sail once more. And only after a few short days, they reached the land of promise, as St. Paul had promised them. 
And it was just as Barfind had described, with the beaches strewn not with sand, but with precious gems and minerals. Flowers and fruits did hang from the trees at the selfsame time, bright of colour and sweet of scent and taste. The sun did never set, but it was always daylight, and there they felt no fear, and no worry, and no pain. They journeyed across this land for forty days, trying to find its limits, the extent of its size. But eventually they were stopped by a vast river which they had no way to cross. And as they stood there wondering what to do, a young man approached them. Brendan, he said, I know you were sent here by the Lord our Father, and he has sent you here, so that you may bring word of the land of promise back to the land of men, and tell everyone what awaits them when all the nations of the world are united under God. For when that happens, God will allow humanity to come here again, and more than that allow you to cross this river and see the full expanse of this land. But now, Brendan, you cannot remain here. You must sail back to Ireland and tell the world of what you have seen and of the wonders that God has put into the ocean, that he put before you and guided you towards so that you may experience them. But before you go, carry with you as many of the fruits and the gemstones of this land, as many as your ship may carry, so that you may be able to prove that you have come here and prove your story. So Brendan and his monks, they filled their pockets with the fruits and the gems, as many as the ship could carry, and they sailed back to Ireland, and they told their story, and they spread it as far and wide as they could. Thanks for watching this video on the story of the voyage of St. Brendan. And thanks to all of my subscribers, my patrons, everyone, and especially thanks to Ashcarp and the other patrons whose names you see scrolling across the screen. If you want to be part of those credits, then you can just sign up to support me on Patreon, which would be lovely. But if you can't afford to do that, you know, liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that is very useful as well as our comments. Comments are lovely. I love comments. Now you may have noticed that this video has no analysis. That's because the analysis is being uploaded as a separate video from now on. I did three polls, one on Twitter, one on YouTube, one on Patreon, and it came out pretty decisively that I should do the analysis videos and the story videos separately. So what I'm going to do is set up three playlists, one for stories, one for analysis, and one that has both for people who would like to keep the context of the two together. So, yep, yeah, that's the new shape of the Irish folklore videos moving forward. Thank you all again, thank you very much, and do remember that your applause is the only way to counteract my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies.